This week on Flats Class, we're fishing with an old friend of mine, Bernie Schultz. Now, Bernie and I go way back to the Ranger boat days when I used to be with that team. But currently, we're on Power Pole and Shimano, and, and Bernie is just one of those really technical anglers that I thought all of you would really appreciate because you'll learn something every time you go fishing with him. Knowing that he had a great familiarity with what I was going to do and Bernie and I had been fishing together just for fun over the last few months, I thought, you know, this would be a perfect opportunity to get him involved with flats glass. We just needed some good weather because this entire season has been so windy. So I said, let's meet halfway between your house and my house. Let's go to Yankee Town and let's just go fishing, see what happens. And let's throw big bait so that we don't have to fool around with little fish. Well, Bernie, I think we're just gonna throw a couple of hard baits today. I brought some big stuff too. I brought a few soft baits that are like big, big baits, but mostly top water, big twitch baits. I brought a couple of different uh, five and six inch long swim baits that we can throw from Z-Man. So I say we just go big or go home. You're going big? Okay. We'll go big today. All right. We'll go big. We'll try to cull out all the small ones. We may not catch as many, but the ones we catch, they'll definitely matter. I think we're going to take a little creek run here in a second off to the left. There's a little Bennett's Creek and it'll dump us out there where you're talking about. We can tool around there until there's enough water to get over to the Spoil Island where we want to try to top water. Yeah, last time I was out there, it was there was plenty of fish around and, and they were the right size, just getting them to, to go. If we get the right tide, it should be good. Yeah, I've put a lot of time in on this, this coast. Most of my focus has been from Crystal River up to Cedar Key, Swanee area. It's treacherous, which eliminates a lot of the crowd and I really like that. You can put a lot of distance between you and the next angler and there's definitely some risk involved, but the rewards are huge. You can really catch some world-class fish for, you know, inshore species and it's it's beautiful. It, you know, it's, it's unmolested, it's, it's undeveloped, it, you know, it's, it's old Florida. And that's what I like about it. Two. There we go. There we go. Pull off. God, now he's back Jeez. on. <laughs> you see that? That is a redfish. Keep him out of his crab pot. I think I think the one I had came off and one I was do. with I him. I do. I think I think there were two chasing it. Yeah. I'm trying to get off these rocks here, buddy. Keep you away from that. The little guy. Wind's got me. I'm going to jump down real fast and try to stake us. That worked. Yeah, well. You want me to get him or you want I'm going to try to get a net out. Oh, no, we're good. You get him? Yeah, we don't need it. If he was bigger, I'd say, yeah. I might pull this out of the way so we don't have to deal with it. Yeah, that was two fish. The other one, I mean, my it's line like, was stick. completely slack. And then, and then he jumped off, and then the other one, there must have been a couple of them chasing it. Yeah. Pretty cool bite, though. Yeah, it was. But they're right where they're supposed to be. I, it's like, I love throwing in this thin grass. I actually like throwing in it with like single hook inline topwaters because right. you never know what's in that grass. I like pulling because you're, it's like stalking fish in a way. It, you know, you're sneaking up on them. Sometimes they know you're there. But if you're stealthy and, and the boat's quiet and, and not a lot of movement, you can still fool them. And I like that, the whole visual aspect of it. The, I like trying to communicate where the fish is for the angler so that he can make the right presentation. You can really only do that in a polling skiff.
There we go. Fish. Nice. Oh, that one's big enough for the big bait. Trying to get down in those rocks. Woo! Get them under control with this rod. Went into a death roll right there. Yeah. Not, a little bigger. Trying not to get this hand wet. That's a hook there, Bernie. Yeah. That is a hook. Oh yeah, he he wasn't coming off. I like those belly weighted EWGs. Yeah, especially especially this one here because the. They put the weight further back in right, the bend. Right. So when the bait's in the water, it falls more like this. Right. Instead of head first, it kind of falls like this. Buys you more time over a rock like that. Right. That is a pretty fish. Look at the blue on that tail. Yeah. So I usually come up with a lesson plan for these flats class episodes. I mean, I want to not have to do the same type of episodes all the time. Now the species sometimes duplicate themselves over and over because you only have so many. But I like to change the game up. And when I talked to Bernie, I was like, it's April, dude. This is a magic month. So we go out there and uh, we stayed with the big baits. In fact, every rod that I had in the boat, I didn't even get tempted by bringing small tackle. I brought nothing but big plugs, top waters, big twitch baits, five inch diesel minnows. That's all I wanted to throw. Of course, the opportunity to sight fish presented itself a few times. It's hard to sight fish with a giant bait. It, a top water or a big paddle tail, like those diesel minnow paddle tails, those big five inchers. But if you tease them along a little bit and make the right cast, you can sight fish with those big baits. Oh, right here, right here, right here. Three o'clock. Got it. Got him. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, why I did it. I did it because of you. Is he going around, <laughs> around that rock? No, he's him. out here, okay. I mean, it was, it was just too juicy to not take advantage of. Oh, who can resist a big, <laughs> a big tug? I mean, you, you look down and you see a fish that's three and a half feet long, you're like, yeah, I want to catch him. I mean, who doesn't want to catch a truck? I'm starting to wish I had a little bit bigger setup now. Should I time and this? I, and who would have thought he'd eat, you know, you'd be able to feed a fish like this who's eating crabs a giant bait like this this is a huge hunk of plastic here opportunistic that's exactly what he is he's Got regretting news for you. This now one's though not gonna fit in the net either usually they fight like this for a little bit and then they just kind of wind themselves down What, what have we got here? We got a flats elephant. <laughs> I'm gonna be careful here. Come on want... down, I'm good. I'm gonna stay in the center. You're good. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with him. <laughs> I'm gonna leave him in the water. <laughs> nice, should be a surgeon. Doctor a drum for nothing. You hear him? Listen to that. About as bass as you can get. Here he goes. You tired yet? Tell you what. I made six <laughs> casts. Six casts. And it's like that thing shows up. <laughs> Crazy. Well, he wasn't going to fit in here. No. No. No need for that. He was not going to fit in there. Let's see if we can catch his cousin. Yeah. The right color. Let's catch the red one. <laughs> Bernie goes, oh, look, there's one. <laughs> you would think having two old pros, if you will, in the same skiff, what could go wrong? <laughs> here we go, here we go. 
That's a good one. Oh, he just came off. Did he? He just came off. Gosh. Oh, that was a good one too. Gosh. But all day long, we would have these, these missteps. We had, I'm gonna say we had at least three or four dramatic misses where we, we came tight and was, we were hooked up on a good fish and it just came off. Don't go in that grass. Oh God. Did he get you off? You know, you just don't expect that to happen to guys like us. And it just proves that we're all human. And no matter what level of experience or, or, or where you are in your fishing exploits, it happens to every one of us. It really does. Epic fails. It's a real deal. The visual aspect of saltwater fishing on the flats, that's definitely helped me in bass fishing. Um, probably more so with smallmouth than anything or largemouth in the bedding season. And my bass fishing's helped me in saltwater because of the variety of lures and presentations that you learn and casting accuracy is huge in bass fishing. Take that redfish I caught today, it was very visual. The fish took a shot at the plug and didn't get it. And had I not seen him as well as I did, the tendency would have been to set the hook and jerk it away from him, he'd have been gone. But I saw that he didn't have it, so I hesitated and then walked it one more time and he came back and got it. And that's, that's one of the things about sight fishing that you know you get from bass or flats fishing. Oh, Red, him. nice job. Was, I had to wait on him. That was a nice job. Had to wait on him. That's why I like to fish the current side of these keys, these little rock bars, because if you're on the front side of them, that's where the predator fish are. Got some shoulders. Yeah, I'm trying to get you out of the rock without going in the water myself. You got a stout rod there too. He won't make up his mind. He likes it in the shade. Oh, he got me on a rock. Did he? He's in all that kelp grass. Playing a fish is as much as as critical as trying to get one to eat. Um, that fish got wrapped up in some grass and a rock. He got bound up in there and. You know, the tendency for a lot of people is to pull and try and get them out of there. It, it, it gets kind of frantic. In bass fishing, if I get a big fish caught up in a bush or a, a lay down tree or a dock or something like that, you don't try to muscle the fish out of the cover. You just go to the cover and hope he stays on until you get there. Pretty good sized fish. Been waiting for that. That's, yeah. that's what you expect on a big bait. Let me just hoist him in. Yeah, pretty decent fish. Yeah, that's a great fish. That's a, that is a nice fish. That's top of the slot right yep. there. Healthy and happy. Back in the brine. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly what I wanted to catch, but I was cool. bored. It's cool how he took it. Yeah. You don't you don't picture these types of fish doing that, but I'm really wanting to put this reel to the to the test, if you know what I mean. Sure. Because I mean 13 pounds of drag. And this is my really fast one. I like for it's an 8.2, so it picks up like 35 inches of line per handle turn. Out here looking for snook and redfish and finding these guys. I think I can even plant the pole here, really. <sighs> Many of you think that those, those twitch baits, such as the MR27, which is the bigger one, or the MR37, which is the extra, extra large one, or even the Catch 5, are not really sight fishing baits. They're more of a power fishing bait. Well, all that is true. But if you know how to work them and you see fish, they have such a slow sink rate and with just a little upwards rod twitch, you can keep them in the zone for so long. You can sight fish with those baits, whether they be snook, tarpon, black drum, <laughs> or redfish. That's a lot of fish. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is a hunk of fish. 
He's as, he's as big and tough as the bottom around here. That yeah. is an amazing animal. And I mean, they eat large blue crabs out here. You don't think about them eating baits like this. You know, th this is just a big plug. Thank goodness it's got some meaty, meaty hooks on it. But I mean, this is what I throw to snook. This is what I throw to big bull redfish. Tarpon. I mean, tarpon. And uh, you would not think that a bottom feeder like that, but if you can get it up closer to their head and twitch it a few times, and he was just sitting in three feet of water. Yeah, it was cool. He eased up behind it, opened his mouth, and it disappeared. You know what? Like a vacuum cleaner. I think, I think I'm going to let you have a little bit of this fun. I think I'm over it. <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to get back up on another island out here, and we'll pull around and I see. I need if a we bottle can. of oxygen after that. <laughs> when I wrap these episodes up, I always think about what makes this episode so good. Well. For one, Bernie Schultz. I, I have to give big props to him for his effort, not only on the bow, but pushing me around in the little skiff. I mean, that little Hell's Bay Eldora is perfect for what we were trying to accomplish today. And we had, we had to have someone willing to pull and put their boat in the same situation. So uh, the Sims rep, Adam Maye, who's also a fishing guide and is a push pole guide, he was a gigantic help for us in this episode because we couldn't even run trolling motors where we were trying to fish. And then all the guys at Lateral Media that make this happen, they, they make two old birds like Bernie and I look pretty spry. And that's all I've got to say. Flats class, it's another wrap great episode. All right, today's tackle talk really is about big baits. I'm talking big baits. So big top water plugs, big swim baits like the five inch diesel minnows, my go-to in April. Uh, we threw the 27MR and uh, I did, I never got my opportunity to tie on the big MR37, but this is the XXL Miradine. But this is the size bait that you want to throw this time of year. It eliminates all the small fish. Now, when you're fishing gear like this, or baits of this size, uh, you're going to have to have a delivery system that does a good job. So here I have on my big swim bait rod, uh, I did use a 4000 series. This is the Shimano Vanford 4000. It's super light, this whole setup's light. This is a Terramar PX. I uh, believe this is just a seven foot medium action rod, but on this big swim bait hook, it is the perfect setup for me. And I'm just gonna take it off so you can see that that is a six aught, a six aught chin locks hook. It's one sixth of an ounce. So for those of you that aren't math wizards, that's more than one eighth and less than one quarter. <laughs> but it allows this whole rig to, to weigh a total of about a half an ounce with this big piece of Elastec on here. And it looks just like the finger mullet that swim in and out of all that thin grass. And it does an excellent job fooling snook and redfish. And you saw today, that is the deal. The top water plugs that Bernie were throwing was these full size top dogs and top dog juniors. These, these are great baits to draw strike in deeper water or from a great distance. Not every, it's an alpha size bait. Not every predator is gonna find this something that they wanna hit. Um, but when they do, you know it's a good fish. And if you're a good topwater hand, you get a lot of action out of these. On my, on my twitch bait rod that I didn't put the, the extra, extra large on, I did put the XL version of the Miradine on here because I wanted to get a bite on my opportunity to get up there. And you'll notice that I have a small piece of bite tippet on this of 40 pounds. Because I actually thought I was going to catch a snook on this particular setup. And then I've got about three feet of 20 pound leader above that. So I got 40 to 20 to my 20 pound braid. And this is on a Terramar XX, uh, seven foot medium. 
This is the new Tranks reel. This is a saltwater low profile bait casting reel that Shimano just came out with. It's very light. It is a 8.2 to one reel. So it's really fast, a great sight fishing tool for me. And it's saltwater proof. It has core protect on it. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this whole setup. And this will probably be moving forward one of my workhorse reels for my business because I'm confident that in the 30 days I field tested this reel, it's going to be a staple on my boat now, honestly. Uh, holds up very well in inshore salt water. So those are just some of the big baits or larger baits that will cull through those small fish and allow you to catch quality, quality fish like I did with Big Bait Bernie today. <laughs>